Hi, everyone. My name is Kamakshi. Uh, I'm 27, and I recently started a nonprofit called Freed, which is focused on encouraging conversations on eating disorders in India. And the reason I started that was because uh, not so long ago, in 2012, I developed anorexia and uh, it took me a, a while to get started. But then eventually I you know, began my journey of recovery from very severe anorexia. And ever since, this has been uh, a dream for me to do. And so, yeah, here I am. When do you first learn about eating disorders or disordered eating? So um, I think anorexia wasn't such a strange term to me. Uh, and when I had started, this was summer of my first year in college. It started as a very naive thing where I had injured myself. I'm a dancer. And my doctor said, you know, if you keep drinking so much soda, uh, one day your bones are going to melt. And so I thought, okay, this is a good excuse for me to make some changes to my diet. I decided I would not drink soda ever again. I'm also very black and white kind of black and white kind of person. So I said, okay, no soda from today. And maybe, you know, I just reflected a little bit and I ate a lot of meat and, you know, just never thought too much about what I was putting into my system beyond what I enjoyed eating. So I thought, okay, I will add some, something that looks green to my plate. It start, what started with that kind of ended, developed very quickly into a, uh, an eating disorder, which I didn't quite know what it was then, but I had very visibly lost a bunch of weight and people had started calling me anorexic without really understanding what I was going through without like, you know, even asking me any questions. Just because I had lost weight, people were calling me anorexic. And even to my mind, that meant anorexic meant, you know, you've lost so much weight that you look malnourished. And so I, you know, I didn't really know what an eating disorder was, but I had heard of anorexia. But when I first learned about it was I went um, for a you know, regular flu, gone to my college's um, health center, and they do your height and weight check every time you come in. And their system flagged something because the last time that I had come in, which was three months ago, I was significantly heavier than what I was this time that they were checking me. And so the system flagged, flagged me as, you know, somebody who could be at risk of an eating disorder. So the college already, this was college in the US. And so they had somebody who was a specialist general practitioner in eating disorders. And so they sent me to her. And uh, I mean, I honestly look back at, think back uh, at that moment and that doctor uh, is probably one of the biggest reasons why I, you know, managed to get out of my, my anorexia. And she, you know, sat me down. She asked me some questions. She was just like, okay, do you, do you feel like something is wrong? Do you understand what's going on with you? And I just, I remember breaking down crying, saying, I have no idea how to make sense of what is going on in my life. But yes, I, you know, I'm exercising like crazy. I'm starving myself. I'm scared of eating. I'm isolating myself from friends, but I have no idea how to stop. And that was the first time she explained to me what an eating disorder was and told me that I was clinically anorexic. So yeah, that time. What makes you want to share about your experience with an eating disorder today? Um, I think for me, what worked even back then uh, in recovery was the first time I, I've never been a very shy person. Um, you know, I'm very vocal about all of my struggles and I've, I've always been that way. Uh, I think more now than ever. So I, you know, wear my heart on my sleeve kind of person. And um I remember back then I was isolating from a lot of friends. I was essentially not really um, hanging out with anybody. And the first time when I decided to confide in a friend of mine and tell her what I was dealing with, it suddenly felt much more um, uh, conquerable. Like I suddenly felt like, okay, maybe this eating disorder is not as strong as I thought it was. And maybe I'm stronger than I thought I was. And just talking to one person made me feel like, okay, there is 
um, you know, I have more strength than I thought. So I figured the more I talk about it, the less strength or the more strength I can take back from my eating disorder. And so I think I started doing that in my own circle. And as soon as I felt like I had, you know, to some degree conquered this, uh, this beast of an eating disorder that I had uh, developed, I knew then that I, I almost felt this sense of responsibility that the more I talk about it, the more awareness that I generate, the more people, because representation is so important and it's completely missing in India right now. Nobody actively talks about having an eating disorder, even though I'm pretty convinced a lot of public entities uh, deal with the same demons that uh, somebody within, you know, mental demons that somebody with an eating disorder deals with. And so I felt very strongly ever since that it's my responsibility to come out and talk about uh, what I had dealt with, how how it helped to talk about it. And um, I do genuinely believe that the more people that come out and talk about their struggles, the less the stigma around these mental illnesses in society, and also the less um, powerful these eating disorders become. Um, and I think the more we talk about it, the more we encourage other people to come out. And, you know, um, the more people can start to realize that they're not alone in their struggle with food and body image and self-consciousness and whatnot. Yeah, I think like talking about it creates like this ripple effect. So yeah, thanks Definitely. for starting. <laughs> thanks for starting. Um, so. so I'm gonna ask you a difficult question, try this. Um, if, you were try, if you were to try to explain to someone who knows nothing about eating disorders, what your eating disorder was, or is, how would you explain it to them? Um, so I remember, um, you know, trying to explain to my friends about this who, and I mean, my friends trying to explain to my parents what it was. And my parents are very uh, open-minded and very supportive of anything I do, but they were also very open about the fact that they just don't understand why something as simple as eating a full meal can be so challenging. And so what I had told them then is that, you know, think about this as a different personality. There's like me, which is Kamakshi and my authentic personality. And then this other thing, which I used to call Ed, uh, eating disorder, uh, this other personality that's Ed, which is also a part of me now. And both of these personalities are constantly at war. Whereas Kamakshi wants to be healthy and wants, you know, mental and physical well-being. Ed has these twisted ideas based on what uh, he has read on social media or, uh, you know, uh, based on comments that friends have made on my appearance uh, and, you know, a lot of other external social environmental factors. Ed has some twisted views on what what mental and what physical well-being looks like and in that moment the ed that was me the shape that my ed had taken was of uh you know restricting of uh counting calories of burning what more than what i had taken in and striving for uh you know a skinnier figure and my ed had a fear of becoming fat everybody's ed looks different but my ed was that and so when I explained this to my family what I told them was that it's not me and I know that I can get myself back but for that I have this entire personality to fight off which believes wholeheartedly and is you know very much a part of me today which believes wholeheartedly that I should be punishing myself in x y and z ways to look a certain way which was its ideal um you know appearance and shape and weight and it was responding to um you know whatever i had consumed from uh, from from social media or whatever i had taken in from uh, you know comments and criticisms from friends and even compliments from friends Com criticisms for gaining weight and you know compliments for losing weight and ed was convinced that the only way to be happy and the only way to be healthy and the only way to be in control was 
starving and overworking out. So I don't know if that would make sense to somebody, but yeah. I think it's a very like beautiful and simple way of explaining it. Like I've never thought about it like that. So that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> Uh, how has your relationship been with body image? You mentioned about, um, you know, about how Ed thinks, but what has been your relationship with body image? So um, I kind of think of my relationship with body image in the past in three phases. So my, you know, pre-Ed phase, then my Ed phase and my post-Ed, you know, I think post-ed, I will describe a little bit later, but um, my pre-ed phase was, I was a very carefree, um, could not give a flying fuck about what somebody thought about how I looked. Um, I was very, um, I think I was never an overconfident person and I was never a, you know, a hun like very out there and very outspoken or like I never used um, um, I was not, never very vocal about uh, expressing how I felt about my body but internally I was very content I just never my body and my appearance was just never that important to me growing up um, I think there were people who would make comments about my shape and my weight and how I looked I was darker than you know, average joe in college uh, in in school and uh, i was slightly you know i was curvier than the average person in college in school and so people would always make comments but it was just never important to me there were a lot of other things that were more important to me that i felt defined me and so i was very carefree happy go lucky could not care and body image i would say was very uh, healthy and very neutral so it was never like oh super positive or and never super negative very neutral was just never that important um, I think safe to say that way and then of course with Ed I think what happened was that um, even with a very neutral body uh, body image I had a blind spot that somebody found and managed to make a comment that just got me in the wrong moment in the wrong place and just suddenly you know if that this was my body image just kind of topped toppled it over to the negative side and I suddenly started to see all of these and remember all of the comments that were going around in school and start to think maybe they were right and maybe there's something wrong with me that I just never saw till now and maybe there's something that needs fixing and I'm a fixer so I thought okay this is a project I'll fix this um, so my sense of body image became much more negative uh, during this phase. And I think as I work on my recovery, I learned how to move back towards uh, a, new, a more neutral body image. So I think I have never, even after all of this, um, you know, recovery process and many years of therapy and many years of practicing uh, self-love and mindfulness and you know everything prescribed by the therapists and doctors um I've never I would never say that I've had very positive body image but for me my uh sort of zen state is when I have a very neutral sense of body image and that I think I've managed to find again so now I would say my relationship with my with body image is back to being neutral and I don't give it too much uh how as you would say in hindi i just like don't give it too much attention i don't i try not to put my body in the center of my thoughts and so um irrespective of how i'm uh, feeling about my body i try to bring it back to what i need it for listening to it for you know uh for when it's hungry when it's tired when it's excited when it's you know things like that and so i think i would say it's just a very neutral relationship I don't necessarily celebrate it or criticize it it's just I just am I think what do you think like what in your opinion causes eating disorders in general I mean you mentioned how you developed it but what's your opinion about what causes it um I don't want to give a textbook answer, but now, you know, of course, having started Freed, I've 
done so much research on this and read up so much about it but even back in the day when i was struggling with it myself i think everybody who recognizes that they or like you know uh, has this moment of realization that wait something is wrong here and i'm using food in a way that i shouldn't be using or is not uh, or that like sh- i should think about what i'm doing here um i think most of those people always have this moment of why me like you know you look across the table and everybody seems to be enjoying a place plate of food normally as you would imagine you know um they put food on their plate because they're hungry and they eat because they're hungry and they eat until they're full and they stop is what you assume everybody else is doing and everybody questions and i definitely questioned you know why am i in this position where like i can barely put a plate of food a uh, plate of food in front of me without being almost scared of it and why is it so hard for me to just eat a meal without feeling guilty about it and uh, i think it was it became very clear quickly to me that there's no like one answer to it um if it wasn't me it could have it could have been anybody in my position at that time and a combination of different factors could have led to you know my exact situation so i don't think there was like you know one two and three combination of factors that caused it um i think there's definitely a um there's an inclination of um, you know based on how you grow up and what conversations around food and health and body image and self uh, esteem are like growing up um that i think when some when people grow up with a lot of um nagging and body shaming and you know comments and criticisms about how they look uh they are more likely to develop an eating disorder because you are it's constantly drilled in your head that appearance is paramount that was not the case with me and i still got you know i still developed one so i don't think i have a perfect answer for what causes eating disorders i would i think it is a combination of um your own you know in the moment your emotional state uh your physical state uh and your environment so i don't i don't think i've yet fig- i don't know if anybody's figured out you know exactly what causes it there's a combination of factors um there's definitely some things that make it easier for you to get it um i don't think i ever found that out about myself and yet i ended up getting one and so yeah i unfortunately don't have an answer for that all right you mentioned that um you know when you went to the health center in college and the you know doctor sat you down and spoke about you know that you had an eating disorder so like how easy or difficult was it for you to accept or just grapple with the fact that you had an eating disorder at that point of time um so i really hope that i don't trigger anyone with these details um anybody listening to this or watching this um but basically i had already like i said the, you know she diagnosed me as a uh, clinically anorexic which meant that my weight according to my height was much below what the healthy uh, limit was and so i you know superficially knew something was wrong i mean i that's not how i was four months ago and it's not like she sat me down and said something is wrong and it came as a massive surprise um but even then i think just not knowing what she was saying i had which is an eating disorder was a big it was just hard for me to accept that i could have something that i didn't even understand um and it wasn't something as tangible as diabetes take this medicine and it'll get fixed you know you have diabetes this is you know you have a deficiency of this this is what you take then you get better it was a lot more intangible than that and it was a lot harder for me to understand why i got it it was a lot harder for me to understand how i'm going to get out of it and it just felt um so it you know even after i had heard her uh, and broken down in that uh, health center uh, you know i was i was just howling um because i hadn't 
I just had no idea what had been thrown at me. Um, but even after that, it took me about a month or two months of getting much worse before I said, okay, I really, this is something that requires my attention and I need to get, get on top of this and, you know, fix it because otherwise I will die. Um, so I think the whole acceptance phase took a long time and it almost only hit me when I saw how my friends, how concerned everybody around me was for me. Because it was hard for me to accept that something that I was treating myself so badly. Um, and the, it wasn't like, you know, it's it, when you get a disease, I feel like sometimes you have a reason why you got it. And, you know, um, and you can be like, you, okay, this is why. Or, you know, you have somebody to blame. And in this case, it was me. I, I, I was the only person to blame. And it was hard for me to accept that. I'm the one, I'm the reason why I'm so sick right now. And so it definitely took me a long time to accept that and say, okay, you know, this is a problem and um, I need to fix it. Um, so the acceptance phase lasted a long time, but uh, I'm so grateful that it happened and that my, you know, that I had this entire support structure around me that helped me get to that acceptance phase um whether it was my parents or my family or my a set of doctors that I was seeing everybody kind of helped uh, guide me towards that uh, state of acceptance at some point oh, yeah thanks for sharing that Mm, what were the ways in which you coped with the eating disorder? I mean, I want you to talk about therapy later on um, and how that was for you. But like, what were the general ways in which you coped with an eating disorder? Um, for So if you're asking for, you know, daily things that I, or like changes that I made, tangible changes. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was to uh, try and not eat in isolation. And luckily that was an option for me, which I, you know, of course is not always an option for everybody, but essentially the first thing that I had said was that I will not eat in isolation for, for a little while till I could trust um, my own, uh, you know, abilities and actions around food. Um, I think that was the first thing that really helped um, in that case. And I just had, you know, a group of two, uh, two or three friends that I really trusted around who I was not so embarrassed around um, who I would uh, always eat with and I had kind of got uh, you know asking for accountability from them was something that went a long way for me um, so I think not eating in isolation was the first I also was um, keeping a food journal for a while which I was um, you know which was just I think the reason why it was so helpful was because a lot of the times when I was eating, it was my ed brain that was thinking and dictating how I act. And later on going and looking at that journal with my Kamakshi brain would help me realize that, okay, this is, look at, or look at how wrong or like, look at how mean this was, the way you treated yourself in this meal. And so it sort of helped me, um, lower the volume of the ed side of the brain and increase the volume of the kamakshi side of the brain um so the food journal was just a very tangible or like you know it was a very physical um manifestation of how i was uh treating food so that was my second thing that really helped and i think um i guess you don't want me to talk about therapy so therapy aside and you know support groups and all of that aside um just um um, forcing myself not to count or not to measure my food so I would just every time my brain would go towards you know did I take two extra bites I would just be like you know try to distract myself from that and for a while I would just really focus on eating mindfully and really trying to feel and understand whether my stomach was telling me that I was full or not um, and that took me a long, long, long time. But I think starting that was part of my uh, process of getting over the eating disorder. I love how you talk about Ed as this like 
friendly adversary. It's not me. It's a different <laughs> thing that had taken over me, and I think it still exists. Um, actually, my dad and I have a funny way of talking about it. Um, sometimes when I say something, he'll just be like, "Did come actually leave the back door open?" Because I hear Ed, and I'll just be like, "Oh my God, maybe you're right." And then he'll just make references to this back door, which I leave open ever so often for the Ed voice to start talking. And hearing that from him sometimes will remind me, and be I, and I will, you know, it just I, I snap out of it and think about how I'm, uh, you know, how I'm talking and whether it's really my authentic voice or whether it's my little Ed voice that creeps up on me ever so often. Yeah, I think so it's also very. It was also very helpful in uh, being able to forgive myself for how I had treated myself. So uh, by removing this eating disorder from myself i was able to kind of acknowledge it as a separate entity that i wanted to just say get lost so yeah. i i love that i <laughs> heartedly love that way of thinking <laughs> and yeah you know even, even i've like kept a food journal so i think that is helpful um so i mean what support did you have while eating with it, like while dealing with the eating disorder like including therapy support groups or like your family whatever support you had during that time um so i think even before i start i do want to acknowledge that i'm aware, hyper aware of how just how lucky i was um because you know not many people that i've come across uh, over the, over the many years who've uh, dealt with eating disorders have this kind of support so i was very very lucky but that's also that also was something that taught me that with the right kind of support recovery is possible and of course it was hard but it was possible um and so so i told you about this general practitioner who diagnosed me she put me in touch with uh, my college essentially had a network of professionals because they were cognizant of the fact that um at that age eating disorders thrive and are more likely to come up in individuals than earlier or later uh and so then much earlier or much later and so we, they had an entire network of um a psychiatrist an on campus psychiatrist and the on campus general practitioner and an on campus nutritionist and then my general practitioner also got me in touch with a therapist a clinical psychologist to help me out i was also then going for uh, once a week uh, group support groups that were helping and so i think that was sort of my five pronged um, um, professional support and then i had this entire sort of guarding army of friends and family my parents flew out and stayed with me for a while they went to therapy themselves to help understand um what i was dealing with and how they can best support me through my recovery process um so my parents were big my parents my brother my entire family was a big piece of the puzzle and um and my friends um it took them a while also to understand how to um how to approach this and how to uh, help me through it and how to give me the kind of accountability that i was uh, that i needed um and so i think all of that that entire net, you know network of doctors um or entire network of professionals um my family and my friends were you know all of that kind of made for my uh, support structure at that time and continues to be i mean i would like you to talk a little bit more about like the process of therapy if you're comfortable and how it worked for you and you know just how long it took and you know just your experience with it yeah well, it took a long time um a so i think for a long time because i was very um my eating disorder was very severe um it took a lot of monitoring in the beginning so for many months i was going uh, you know checking in weekly with the general practitioner i was not allowed to see my weight because it was triggering for me so i decided that i don't want to know it um and but she was you know they were checking my vitals every day my height my weight blood pressure everything um i was seeing my therapist once a week i was seeing who was helping me you know really dig down and figure out what's behind the food because i was you know of course on the surface 
um, my substance was was food and I was acting out on food but it really wasn't the void that I was trying for food to fill was didn't have anything to do with food and so she was the one who was really helping me crack down what it was that um, um, where in my life I was feeling this lack of control that led me to use food to feel in control um, I was also um, with which which I've now understood is very common um, during my uh, eating disorder phase I, I think just as I started recovery I also uh, was diagnosed with depression and so I was seeing uh, a psychiatrist once a month sometimes once uh, twice a month uh, who you know who diagnosed me with depression and he was helping me out more on that end on uh, figuring out you know how to cope with the day-to-day -day stresses of school uh, of college and uh, you know figure out uh, how I can um, you know um, accept that depression as part of my personality which took a whole other kind of um, acceptance process and uh, deal with it head on um, so I was seeing my, that uh, psychiatrist I was also seeing a nutritionist that my psychologist had recommended who helped me sort of redefine my very very strong notions on food so she helped me you know she helped me see why I was looking at certain foods as good and certain foods as bad and why I had so many rules and boundaries around what I can and cannot or should and should not eat. Um, and the nutritionist, I think, was also a big, big part of helping me start treating food more as a fuel for my body and my soul and less as calories and carbs and fat and protein and things like that. So the nutritionist was a big part of the journey as well. And Beyond all of that, um, I would go for a weekly support group, which to my mind was more helpful than pretty much anything else because that is where I felt like, oh, where I felt like my eating disorder was the most normal and I felt normal and I didn't feel like something was wrong with me because there were so many other people who were dealing with the same thing and I never once felt like something was wrong with any one of them. And so that's, I think the support group is what also helped me feel like I wasn't alone and helped me normalize what I was uh, dealing with without, you know, without making me feel like it wasn't important for me to, um, you know, fix it um or or you know deal with it um so all of that was what i did for months at a stretch i think even maybe years um so it took me i think about two years before i stopped seeing um the psychiatrist and the nutritionist um i continued doing uh, therapy pretty much um till date in fact uh, even though I don't now necessarily actively have an eating disorder, um, I still keep up the therapy. But it took me many, many, many months um, of constant support. But that's also because, you know, I was at a very extreme stage when my eating disorder was diagnosed, which is why I think it's very important to note that the earlier you are able to diagnose it and the earlier you can spot these signs and symptoms, the easier it becomes. Uh, to start the recovery process um, but I am living proof that even very extreme cases uh, with a lot of hard work and support there is light at the end of the tunnel. That sounds so hopeful. Uh, I'm very hopeful I'm a diehard optimist and you know life experience has taught me that there is hope so yeah. Uh, how do you think Lavna can support someone who's, um, you know, recovering from an eating disorder? Um, I think especially because um, a lot of people uh, develop eating disorders at a younger age. Um, family, you know, automatically, by virtue of that being the case, family automatically becomes your first line of defense friends and family um you know for a lot of us we're still staying at home um and even if we're not staying at home you know uh it's just close to when we were and so family is your you know inner inner uh guardian uh, circle and so i think it's 
when I've seen, and, I, and now I've seen this in so many of uh, my, uh, you know, people who I've heard uh, stories from, where when family is not supportive, it is, it just becomes, you know, infinites, infinite testimonially, oh my God, I can't say the word now, but infinitely more difficult um, to deal with uh, something, something so, um, you know, big um, for individuals. And I think for me, what helped the most and something that I can really, I cannot stress enough how, how helpful it can be. If families can put in the effort of getting, you know, of making themselves aware and really understanding what eating disorders are and, um, you know, what that entails, what kind of, what kinds of um, thoughts come into somebody's minds or what kinds of um, behaviors uh, people feel compelled to, to follow. I think if families can really invest the time and effort in understanding what an eating disorder is and what their loved one is going through and the more they can try and because obviously you know not having gone through it it's hard to empathize but they can you know the more they can sympathize and the more they can understand what it means uh, the the easier it gets for the person who's dealing with it and you know that I think also gave me some um, hope and uh, almost empowered me to feel like I can I can deal with this because my family is standing behind me and I don't think I think words of affirmation go a long way and so the more that you can express the fact that you're there behind them no matter what because you know you try and you fail there was there were times where you know I would say yes I'm ready to get over this but I would fall back into my previous patterns and so that happens to everybody you know uh, so I think the more patient you know if if the more patient um, families and loved ones can be um, the the more supported you feel and the more um, capable you feel of being able to take on something this big and uh, so I think from my own personal experience what I think really helps um, for for somebody to hear is just words of affirmation knowing that you're there for them knowing that even when they mess up or even when they try and fail um, you're there to support them through you know the next phase um, and I cannot stress enough how much it helps to just know a little bit more about what your loved one is dealing with um, and yeah so that you can you know as close to you can get as close to empathizing with them as possible without actually living through it what do you think are some of the strengths that you've built up you know during this whole time um i think for me personally i was already pretty um high on empathy but now I think it's like through the ch off the charts. Um, it definitely I think my my ed has definitely helped me become more empathetic and uh, removed judgment from uh, you know my thoughts pretty much completely. Um, I'm very cognizant of when I you know feel judgmental towards somebody because I know how much more there is than what meets the eye. Um, because I've, you know, dealt with that and lived with that for many years. So I think empathy, um, compassion, um, also just tenacity. I think if anybody asks me what's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, this has got to be it. I mean, nothing even came close to it. Nothing academic, nothing professional, nothing ever has come close to uh, dealing with this. And so I think it has given me, it has, it has shown me how tenacious I can be and, and increase my tenacity also. So it has made me more empathetic, more compassionate, more tenacious, more, um, also more outgoing. I think I've, uh, the more people that I've spoken to, it has helped me remove some um, social anxiety from my uh, personality as well. And uh, more confident in myself, in my and I'm not, again, not talking so much about feeling comfortable in my body. You know, I just don't think about that way, but but definitely more confident in my abilities. Um, so, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, 
what are some of the things that you wish to change about the way people talk about their food or like or about their own bodies because i think like these ideas of desirability or you know a way one should look has been so foundational to how we've been brought up how do you think like how do you want to change that where do i start um i think the biggest thing for me that i would love to see change uh, especially in india is um and you know all over the world but also in india is is this notion that a lot of uh you know our youth um deals with these days which is that appearance and beauty is central and paramount to your worth um whether that is um you know socially social desirability whether it's marriageability whether it's uh so i think in any across the spectrum the fact that appearance is central i think is just completely twisted and a very unhealthy um, a very unhealthy yardstick to live by um i think i'd also like to not focus on i think um in general i would like to um i don't think we can remove social media it's one of those uh, changes that i think we cannot reverse at all and so what we can do is start to promote healthier conversations or like a healthier narrative around food and diets and um you know um nutrition and so i would love to see a more health and well-being focused approach to nutrition than weight and shape and appearance focused approach to nutrition um i would also just you know love to see more compassion towards ourselves i think there are days when i think about how i treated myself if i was to ever treat somebody else like that i would never have friends you know i just was so mean to myself and so i wish that people can just practice compassion not just with everybody else but also with themselves and just cut themselves some slack and feel like it's okay to um well a to understand that there is no such thing as perfect and then even if there was feel like it's okay to not be that that thing that you think is perfect um there's a lot that i would like to change but i think to start with i would just i just hope that we can all treat ourselves and other people with compassion and remove these twisted ideals of beauty and standards of uh standards of beauty and appearance whether it's your skin color or your shape or how you dress or your you know how your hair looks or how you speak um what you speak it's just too much pressure to deal with Yeah this is the last question to you um what are your thoughts on eating disorders being a largely western concept and what do you think about it in the indian context oh my god i mean i feel so strongly about it that i started a non-profit around it so you can only imagine how much i cringe every time i hear somebody tell me that this is not an indian problem you know this is a problem limited to western populations um well for starters i think that's complete bullshit and not true at all um i think it is such a harmful um misunderstanding and myth to to propagate that because it can really f- make a lot of people feel like something is you know that they're they're alone in their struggle which is the worst feeling when you're dealing with something so so strong um um so i think that myth is more harmful than people realize just throwing comments like oh it's not a problem in india can be more damaging than people realize um and the reason why i think it's completely untrue is because having grown up in india i think anybody who has grown up in india kind of recognizes how socially acceptable it is to comment on people's weight and maybe for some people you know they can just brush it off and not pay heed to it or like not think about it too much but for most people it hits somewhere and 
even you might even if you don't immediately act out on on those comments it is the, these are things that stay with you for a long time and it only takes and you know they it like builds insecurities and it builds doubts in your in your mind uh, and it only takes you know one wrong circumstance and one wrong comment to unravel all of these insecurities that you've bottled up for so many years and that can you know lead to something like an eating disorder so i think india if anything is a perfect cocktail for uh, eating disorders to thrive because there is you know i think all of the reasons why eating disorders thrive in the west which are uh, you know uh, twisted ideals of social media focus on appearance focus on weight all of that has come to india and a long time ago so it's definitely something that our uh, population also deals with and then to top that there is this social ownership of weight and appearance and focus on marriageability and how you look for that that defines your worth in society um so if anything i think it's um i think it's way more uh, of a problem than people um are willing to accept and it's very um common in our society to brush these hard conversations under the rug and say that oh no this is not yet a problem in our country um or well, sure i would love to believe that it's not yet a problem in our country but i do not i don't think that's the case but even if it was should we not at least be working on making sure that it doesn't become as much of a problem in india as it is in the west so i think no this is a complete myth that these are western problems india is as much um uh, as prone to it as any other uh place on this planet um and if we don't start working on generating awareness and starting these conversations then we'll have a much bigger problem at our hands yeah, in a few years so yeah thanks um if you want to say anything else that you haven't said yet or just like last thoughts the floor is yours no i think um you know i started freed with this vision of creating a platform uh which encourages people to talk about eating disorders to learn about eating disorders to um uh, to find help when in, when needed and um, the more people that we've talked to and the more people that get connected to us uh over and that have gotten connected to us over the past couple of months um the more validated i feel uh about this hypothesis that this uh, eating disorders are a concern in india body image body dissatisfaction is a big concern in india and there is a big need to do something about this today and now and my only hope is that uh, through a platform like this we can provide a uh, hope to people who are dealing with these uh, mental illnesses we can provide accurate information for those who um don't quite understand it yet and we can you know we can create a network of you know professional support um for those who who need help whether it's in the form of psychologists um nutritionists psychiatrists um uh general practitioners uh, etc just my hope is that we can generate awareness and create a space for support and intervention when needed